seeing you again makes me remember parts of myself that I had forgotten about. Parts like treasures, like bottom of the sea dwellers, perfect pearls and storytellers, sunk into the sand and the shipwreck but still poking out from the neck, arms waving in the calm current saying, look at me, look at me shining and dancing in the deep full bottom of the sea, aren't I so, so pretty? I thought those treasures were long gone to pirates or whale stomachs or the pockets of lovers of deep sea explorers. I thought they were lost for good, but you still see them in there struggling in the sea, shining but clouded by my junkyard body, hidden inside all sorts of organs and pride, captured in ribcage, shining emerald past the white bone stage, lodged behind lungs, rubies inside me that have long gone unsung, are warming up behind the curtains of my skin, which receives the whipping wind underneath the bridge, and I know that we both remember every detail of where we've been. And flakes of gold that used to flow through my soul began instead to grow into coal. And in the chapel filled with shadows, there was nothing left of light or beauty to behold. But you, you little troll, have turned the coal back into gold. And it's sharp and it's shy, but it's starting to unfold. And the sunshine in my belly that had grown into tragedy, so perpetually overcast until my midsection resembled a cloud of poisonous gas, has begun peeking through the pollution to feed the lawns that are my limbs, as if saying I know I've been gone, but I'm back with yellow and hummingbird hymns. And the grass is saying, yo man, if you want, you can tell me where you've been, but it's just really good to be warm again. And the moon that used to live on my face, at least after sundown in this new city place. That moon that was my marvelous mischief, silver slices of nighttime wit, began to show off less and less, and learn to become dull, obscuring itself behind black sky smoke. Night after night it began to choke up the mites and the dust bunny fluff of the star-pierced clouds. Even the tiniest dots in the heavens were outshining my moon face, like little earrings still somehow managing to sparkle through the endlessly impossible, intertwining thick wind-blown wisps of hair on the freshly jeweled ears of a six-year-old girl. But you walking me back from the train has at least reminded my face of the moon it used to wear, sometimes pale and partial, fragments of the whole potential. But often it was a catch you off guard and make you warm Crayola colored spectacle, harvest orange on October nights, and even making appearances frosty mornings as a fresh start white. You know, you've never tried to take my treasures from within me, have never tried to steal the only things that are shining, have never wanted to keep my beauty only for your own collection of showcase scenery. You have always just sweetly pointed them out to me, have lifted the kidneys and shown me the stones that lay underneath. Let me explore on my own while you teach lectures on what is special about every rock inside the landscape of my being. And you have never kept my story anything but safer than the ordinary, tucked away inside layers of coached breathing. My tale takes on a new meaning, one of less guilt-ridden remembering, and it stays closed between the bindings, dog-eared pages sometimes unwinding, and trying to find the right words and the right timing to tell of the trauma that was rendered drama, but... You know how this story unfolds. What I bold in this text is the way that you have slowly drawn out of my chest the things that fell long ago into a well in the bottom of a stone-cold home where my heart used to swell. And now you are carefully lifting both treasures and the hell inside one metal bucket on an old frayed rope so you can show me how to keep in one heart both the horror and the hope.